right, that went pretty quick. Can you hear me okay? This sounds so much different with this setup right here. Just got to get used to it. Well, you open your Bibles this morning to Galatians chapter 1. That's where we're going to be studying a little bit this morning. Um, but before we go there, I'm going to read some scripture to you out of another book that we've read out of several times recently. And we're going to do it again this morning. And before we do that, be praying for these folks with, with this storm. Uh, a lot of people's not aware of the magnitude. Um, it's wreaked devastation from Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, Tennessee, and Kentucky. And maybe Mississippi and Alabama before it's over with, with all the flooding. We don't know. We don't know how high the Mississippi is going to get or anything else. But it's been a great deal of flooding, a lot of loss. Uh, this morning, uh, we're able to come to the house of God as we do every Sunday morning. And we thank God for that. But uh, there's a lot of folks this morning that can't go to the house of God, uh, even if they wanted to. Uh, a lot of roads, especially up in Georgia and up all up in the Carolinas, uh, Roads are washed out, bridges are washed out, dams are failing. People have lost everything that they own. We sometimes, we, we, we really don't consider the problems that these people are having because it doesn't pertain to us today. It's not my problem, it's, it's their problem. And it's sad that a lot of us think that way. But let me ask you a question. How many here this morning, you can raise your hand, that has family in one of these areas where the storm is affecting them. Okay, great, thank you. You can put them down on about half the class. Uh, we also have family up there. My, my son's in Franklin, North Carolina. It can be a devastating time. I don't know if any of you have ever been through a disaster. Uh, I had the privilege of being in Hurricane Andrew. And I say that because looking back, it was a privilege to be here today. It was, uh, as you know, it was a horrible storm. It destroyed everything in its path. And I'll tell you a little bit about that uh, before we get into this. When I went down to help a friend of mine move some boats up in car up he lived off car sound road and they would move the boats up into the canal and tie them off so the storm wouldn't blow them away and i went down there to help him it was his, his father had a business down there and that's he rented out boat slips and whatnot and the storm came in early and we were working didn't have radio or information at the time we, we were working well the storm came in early so we were trapped so we stayed in a friend of theirs house in leisure city and when that storm hit, when the eye passed over us, we opened the back garage door, a little side door there, and we just shined a light out across the neighborhood, and there was no neighborhood. It was gone, totally destroyed. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with a hurricane, but when a hurricane comes through, the wind comes one direction. When the eye crosses, the wind comes the opposite direction. So everything that just blowed away is fixing to come back. So I looked at, looked at my friend and I told him, I said, we're in trouble. But when that storm ceased, the house that we were in never lost a shingle. Not one. The windows were not covered, but they were not broke. We was in the only house in Leisure City that survived. That's God. Amen? And I look back now and I see that. And how it strengthens you in your life. And uh, yeah, I get emotional about it because, I mean, it was, it was devastating at the time. But I look ahead now and I look back at that now. And I see all the good that came out of that storm. And it's the same way today with all, these, all the damage that's done over in Florida. 
all the things in all these other states and all the flooding, and these people are losing their homes, just washed away. But God will make good out of it. God will use it for his glory if we allow him to. I remember coming home after being down there for several days to be able to walk up to a spigot and turn it and water come out. What a blessing. Folks, we have so many blessings every day that we take for granted. Brother Morgan just come back from Brother Chad Stanley's place up there in Georgia. Power poles, he said they're down for miles. Every power pole. It's going to be a while before those folks get power back. So they're going to be suffering through. I mean, you know, it's no big deal without power, right? Until the sun comes up and it's 90 degrees. At night, or even at night, if it's humid and you have no electricity. Most people don't have water. They have no way of getting water. Some people don't even have generators. You know, and, and, and folks, we're, we're always told to prepare for a storm. But I learned in Hurricane Andrew, you put all your provisions up. You, you, put, you put your water, you put your food, you put it all up. And then the storm blows it all away. You did your best, didn't you? But you're still thirsty, and you're still hungry, and you're still doing without. That's why it's so important that we share what we have. And I want you to keep this in mind as they're talking about the ports are wanting to go on strike. Now here's the time that these people have nothing. And their hope today is in us that we will bring and supply them with food and water or their, whatever their needs may be. You know, babies need, need formula. They need something to, to, to eat. And these people, the roads are washed out, bridges are down, and now the ports want to talk about going on strike. That's gratitude for you, isn't it? But folks, that's how, we, that's how we get sometimes as Christians. We get hard in our lives too. That's why, that's why I chose the book of Galatians this morning. We have so much to be thankful for. We need not let our hearts get hard. And I want to read, I'm going to read, I'm going back. I'm on, you can stay where you're at. I'm going to Revelation. And I'm going to read something to you out of chapter 2. We read over this not too long ago. But one of the... the we're going to be talking a little bit. Paul's going to be in Galatians is writing to the church of emphasis in, in Ephesians there. So, and this is, this is the same church that John, the revelator, wrote to in the book of Revelation. And I want you to listen to what God told him to write. He said, unto the angel of the church of emphasis write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's identifying as, as to who he is that's speaking here. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and has borne and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. That sounds like God's kind of giving him a little praise there, isn't he? He's a little bit proud of that church, isn't he? But listen to his next statement. Listen to what he says. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou have left thy first love. Now, he was praising them. For, for what they think about what he was actually saying. He was basically telling him, You're studied up. You have to have some type of knowledge in order to fend off the false prophets and whatnot. So they've been reading, they've been studying, they've been doing, doing the things that they ought to do. Nevertheless, and my point is today is that we can do the same thing. We can become so spiritual that we're no worldly good. Everything's about me and the knowledge that I have. It's all about how good I am in Christ. I, have, I know so much. We start to become the Christian police. And when he's talking about lost his first, when he lost their first love, you remember when you first got saved? I don't know about you, but I just felt like I was, I was a kid. 
and I felt like a building was lifted off of me. I was so happy on the inside, I could not describe to you how I felt. It was just, you, you was just so excited inside. And you didn't tell the world. You didn't care who it was. Brother Morgan preached the other, the other Sunday, talking about how we'll get to, we will start to pick and choose who we witness to if we're not careful. That's what happens when we lose our first love. When we forget just how important Christ is in our lives. Folks, when, when I got saved, I, who, I was a nobody. And, and the, guess what? All the nobodies of this world need Jesus. It doesn't matter whether it's a drug addict or a big old tattooed bike rider. It doesn't matter who it is. They need Christ. And if we're not careful, we'll get so spiritual. We'll start to worry about our clothing more than we do the gospel. We'll start worrying about what pews we sit in and what color they are and what type of building we have. Everything begins, it will become more important than spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, I don't have to tell you that. Look around the world. Look at all the church houses today. How many of them are closing? How many of them are dying? I just read, I just read to you where um, preachers are going to go up and preach against Christian rock. There's no such thing as Christian rock, you know, but, but, but he's going to preach against it because people are bringing it into God's house. You know why? They've lost their first love. So they've forgotten what it was all about. It's all about knowing Christ. That's all that we're here for this morning. We're here to learn, but we're here to serve our Savior. That's what, we're, that's what the church house gathers for. And folks... My mouth getting dry already. I should, should have never swallowed that gum, amen. Should have kept it. <laughs> but, folks, the church house, this is a gathering place for the saints. We welcome the lost in because we want them to get saved. We want to preach the gospel to them today. But the church house, according to scripture, is for the saved. We gather ourselves together, okay? So now how do the lost get saved if we gather ourselves together? We go out and knock doors. And there's so many people that don't witness to anybody anymore. And they got every excuse in the world. I can give you a bunch of excuses. My hip hurts. Yours? Your hip probably hurts too. Or my back aches. Or my legs hurt. My feet hurt. I can't stand up. I don't have any clothes. I can't read good. I can't see without my glasses. I need a big book. We can come up with all kinds of excuses. But while we're making excuses, people are going to hell. And all of the excuses is for one reason. This right here. You lost your first love. See, that's the importance of, of what we're reading right here in Revelation. God commended them for what they were doing. But they lost their first love. And folks, all I'm saying to you is, look, just look around you today. It doesn't matter what country you look at. It doesn't matter what part of the United States right now. Think about it. Hawaii's burn up, right? We got seven states that's just been hit by one storm. And I don't know if you know, but there's another one building in the exact same spot that that one came from. And according to the computer models, it's going to follow pretty much the same path, at least into the Gulf. And then they don't know where it's going to go yet. But folks, the world's in turmoil. And it, it, look at Israel. They're fighting for their lives over there. And it's all for the same reason. They lost their first love. That's where it starts. And it continued to drift further and further and further to the left, to where the gospel just gets lost. And all I'm saying to you is that we've got a good thing right here. But too many times in our daily lives, we start having a little pity party. And we start thinking about all the things that's wrong in our lives. All the problems that we had today. Well, when I turned my television on this morning and last night, I got no problems. None. You know, all the problems I had, I can't tell you one right now. I, I forgot them. When I saw what those poor people, so I've been there. I know what those people are going through. There's no bathroom. 
There's no kitchen. There's no refrigerator. There's no power. There's no coal. There's no heat. There's no food. There's no water. You're flooded and nothing to drink. Well, you could build a fire and boil the water, but all the wood's wet. Matches are washed away. See, we don't think about all those things. But when I saw those things, my heart just broke. I've been there. I know what it's like. And it's horrible. So all my problems, what problems? I don't have any problems. When I saw that, I I said, Lord God, thank you. How blessed we are today that we can come in here in an air-conditioned building, sit in a nice pew, and read scriptures, and study God's word in a group of fellow believers. You can't be any more blessed than that. The building should be packed full. Why is it not? Because they've left their first love. Folks, this storm can go two ways for people. God will use it for good if we do our part. If people would get out when they get a chance and talk to these folks, get the gospel to them, let them understand that God works in mysterious ways. Now, I know this is what you think when you just lost your home. Why would God do this to me? He didn't. It's a sin-cursed world that we live in. It rains on the just and the unjust alike. And we don't understand all that God has for us. But folks, we need to understand that these storms, as bad as they are, are important. See, we don't think about the other side of things. We don't think about the sanctuaries over there that just got cleaned out. So that, so that the water and the little fishes and all the crab and all that can have new life over there. And it'll just explode now because of the cleaning that was done because of the storm. Where we leave it alone is just die out. God knows what he's doing. It is his earth. Now sometimes, I mean, we're affected by it. Sure we are. But it's got to be. Uh, I'll, t- I'll tell you another little story. My, I lost my sister when I was, I don't know, I don't remember now, about 15, 14, 13, somewhere along in there. I lost my sister in a freak accident. And my father just could not understand what was happening and why God would allow it. And my father basically turned away from God. He never quit believing, but he quit going to church. You know, he, he quit attending. He didn't, he didn't want to talk about anything about the church. He just, he was brokenhearted. And I, I was young, and I didn't understand what was going on, you know, and I didn't know, didn't have the knowledge to, to know anything to help him or anything, and we didn't have the proper teaching in, in, in the church. But I saw how it affected his life, and it pushed him from God. But, folks, we can use these same things to draw you to God. But instead of pushing God away, we need to run to him. We need to run to him, get closer to him. And folks, we can't even do that on a normal day. If we, if we as Christians would rather stay home, think about this now. Like I said, the place ought to be packed full. But because we've left our first love, we'd rather stay home and listen to it on the radio. Isn't it easier to do that? I don't have to get up and get dressed. And this is what you're saying. Well, I I love the Lord, but I don't think I should have to get dressed and and go to visit his house. That's what you're saying. So we don't look at it like that, but that's the truth. And the people at home on the radio saying, oh, that's not the way I feel. Yes, it is. And you would rather sit at home and drink coffee rather than get dressed and come to the Lord's, Lord's house and honor your God, because that's what you ought to be doing this morning, being fed the way you ought to be. The fellowship is important. I don't know about you, but I look forward to seeing some of y'all. Some of you. (laughs) But I I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to having a chance to speak to you. Unfortunately, I don't have time to get around and see everybody in here every morning, but I try to. You know, I, I, I enjoy seeing folks and getting a chance to talk with folks. Find out what's going on in your world. What prayer do you need? What's going on in your life? Things good or bad? How's the hip this morning? Right? I mean, I I look forward to that. 
And those people that are sitting at home, they miss all of that because they're full of excuses and it all points right back to right here. They've left, they've left their first love. Folks, all I'm telling you this morning is don't do that. Don't allow Satan to steal your joy because that's all that's happening. What does it cost you to get up here and come to church in the morning? You know, we got some people to drive for miles to get here. That's the truth. And faithful to be here. Then we got some people that, that, wouldn't, that won't even cross the street. And you're just cheating yourself. Because I promise you, there's a blessing here if you'll come here to get it. If you don't get it from me, you'll get it just from seeing somebody and speaking with somebody else. If you don't get it from, if you don't get it from me, maybe the preacher will give you a good blessing this morning. But you'll get a blessing somewhere along the line. And our time's dwindling away. Ephesians chapter 1. Galatians, I'm sorry. Did I tell you Galatians really? Yeah. I, I didn't even tell you the right book because I'm in Ephesians. <laughs> we'll get it straightened out here in a minute. If you look there in Galatians, I don't think he was writing to the Ephesians, right? You're wondering how I got that out. How do you end up over in Ephesians? Church of Emphasis if he's in Galatians. We'll get it straightened out. Turn, turn, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. And you know Paul, Paul here is in, he's either in prison or in house arrest. And he's writing to them and, and for, for a change. He's writing to encourage them. Now most of the time in Paul's writings, what's he normally doing? He's normally correcting us, browbeating us, isn't he? And we need that. And we need that a lot. And a lot of people, a lot of people get upset that a lot of people won't go to church because he stepped on their toes. If I don't get my toes stepped on, I'm, a, I'm disappointed. Folks, we need to be reminded where we came from. We need to re, be reminded that drinking's a sin, smoking's a sin, cursing's a sin. Will it send you to hell? No. We're saved. But it's still a sin. And we still need to do our best not to do those things, not to get to heaven, but because we're going to heaven, Right? So it's nice to be reminded. I don't know about you, but I like to look back and say, boy, that's, that's where I was. But this is where I'm at. That's the life I used to live, but this is the life I live. Folks, I feel good that I know the Lord Jesus Christ. And I get excited about that. And, that, and that's something we don't want to do. But that's what Paul is doing here. Paul's trying to encourage his people. And, he, so, and we're not going to have time to get through it, but if you'll read through the book, and, and Pastor mentioned this the other night, and I'm going to mention it again. You have to remember that this is written as a letter. Now, it's broke up in chapters and verses because it makes it easier for us to study. We can go right into the middle of it. We can go into, instead of starting at chapter 1, we can go right to chapter 4, and we can pick it up in the middle of that chapter and study, and we can convey that to somebody else by giving them the chapter, the verses that we study. And that's nice. But if you read it in its entirety as a letter, you'll better understand it. A lot of heresy gets picked off because people want to go into somewhere and pull something out of content. Where if they was to read the entire letter, they would understand the content of what they was reading. So, it's just, I just, I don't know, I just have to throw that in there. It didn't cost you nothing. All right, look at ch uh, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are in Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now he's writing this letter to the saints in Ephesus. He's writing to the church of Ephesus. But if you notice, it also said faithful in Christ Jesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. That would be you and I. So he's not just writing to the church itself. Now I've heard people say that this letter was probably passed around from church to church to church to church. It is today anyways, right? So I'm sure it was. So it was written to us, the believer. But the thing that caught my attention that he said, the faithful in Christ. Is that you today? Is that you? Is he talking about you, the faithful in Christ? Can you imagine? That, that's, that's a pretty good title to hold, isn't it? The faithful in Christ. Folks, that, that's a title that we should be proud to carry and hang on to. The faithful in Christ. And I sure hope he's talking about you and I. But I want to be faithful to my God. I want to be faithful. And I hope you want to be faithful. He says, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, did you notice here how he linked the two together? 
Hey, how you link God and Christ together as one? Hey, man, we got one God, right? He says, grace be to you in peace. You understand that there is no peace without God's grace. You're not going to get peace. The whole world today is looking for peace, isn't it? And yet the whole world's in turmoil because they're looking for peace in the wrong place. There's only one place to get peace, and that's from God. And you're not going to get peace without God's grace. You get God's grace, then you'll get peace. The two go hand in hand. And you're not going to have peace without God's grace. When you come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, then you'll get peace. Then you remember back when you got saved, the peace that fell upon you, won't you? Remember the peace that you had when you got saved, when you realized? You know, first, in order to get saved, the first thing you got to do is understand that you're a sinner and you're on your way to hell. You know, if you don't know that, you can't get saved. How are you going to get saved? What are you going to get saved from? Folks, people in this world today don't know and understand that they're on their way to hell. Folks, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you're lost. And you're bound for hell. There's no other way to put it. You're going to hell without Jesus. When you get Jesus, you'll get the peace. And we get Jesus because of what? His grace. Because of his grace, I can, he shares his love with me. Verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I got a list here for you, if I can, if I can find them. My printer quit working, so I had to handwrite some of these notes, and I was in a hurry, so they're hard to read. So I got my wife to take a picture. Or I, I took a picture and got her to print them off on, with her phone, and... It only takes a small portion of the page. So there's like 50 pages. So we'll be here like three days. So I decided I'm just not going to use those notes and I'll go through my handwritten notes and see if I can remember. But with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So in Christ Jesus, we have the benefit of knowing Christ. What a blessing. Is that not a spiritual blessing to you? Sure it is. Being chosen for salvation. Adopted as his children. We have forgiveness. We have insight. We have the gifts of the Spirit. The power to do God's will. The hope of everlasting life. Living forever. All because we have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, what's the world running from? Why would it, I do not understand for the life of me why anybody would run from those things. Because when they don't want Christ, that's what they're doing. They're running from all the things that everybody else is looking for. So I don't, I don't understand them. And when it says in heavenly places, what's he, what's, it simply, what's, what's he really saying right there? It simply means that these blessings are eternal, not temporal. They're forever. If it's in heaven, brother, it's going to be here for, forever and ever and ever and ever. So we have heavenly blessings. They're, they're forever. Salvation is forever. It's not temporal. It's permanent. And folks, that's, that's, the reason, that's the reason I went back to Revelations. I always say Revelations, don't I? I always put that S on there. Revelation. Folks, it's eternal life. I went back there because we, we become so... I don't even know really how to, how to say that. We just become so involved in everything except for the simple fact of what Brother Morgan preached last week. It's Christ. God's grace. And we're saved. And we're on our way to heaven. And that's the most important things. And we don't want to lose sight of that. It's okay to learn. It's okay to study. And we want to grow in Christ. But we don't want to forget the spiritual blessings that God has given each and every one of us. And I've got to quit. I'm sorry, brother. All right, that's it for today.
Let me see, 793 in Sunday school this morning. Amen, that's pretty good. Well, we'll take a few minute break and we'll come back for preaching service.